Um, I know that Nick wasn't here for the review for the Marvels. I don't know if he wanted to give his thoughts real quick about it. Um, or Hunter wanted to give his quick thoughts. Uh, yeah, I can give my uh, quick no, thoughts on it. Let's, let's so, so I'm I'm kind of on the same camp as I think most of the internet when it comes to Captain Marvel. I'm like a little kinder to it because I think uh, you know once uh, once the ball gets rolling when. Uh, Brie Larson and Samuel Jackson are working together in that. I think the movie really steps up. I love the twist with the scrolls in the first movie. But beyond that, I think Captain Marvel is just, eh. It's a very meh film because I think a hard, huge part of that is because, because Carol Danvers doesn't really grow as a character in that, in that first film. She kind of just already starts exactly in the same place where she ends up. And with the Marvels, I think the thing that got me excited about it is because that she was going to have to interact and and Brie Larson was going to have to play off of other characters. Like we get uh, um, Tiana Paris, who's playing Monica Rambeau, and of course, the absolute highlight of the movie, which is Amon Vellani as a Kamala Khan in Ms. Marvel. And I every single second that the three of them are on screen together, interacting, getting to play off each other, Kamala kind of getting the initial, you know, don't meet your heroes treatment and then developing this bond with both the, with Carol and Monica. It is absolutely stunning to see. I think this is some of the best uh, set pieces as far as like three, as far as a team working together, the initial uh, fight scene where they're all switching places throughout space and time. I thought that was very fun. That was a very uh, creative use that was very creative and it had a kind of imaginative spark that I think has been a little bit lacking in a lot of uh, MCU films and even action blockbusters in general, save something like John wick or even uh, going to Marvel, something like Sean Chi. But where I think the movie kind of falls short is I think, I think uh, this villain wasn't shit. It's, it is a plot device character that I think, Credit to Zawa Ashton. She is doing the absolute best she can for a character that is written on paper so thin you could poke it with just your finger. Yeah, so um, that's where we definitely agree. And I'll be honest, that's one of my biggest issues with the, the last Mission Impossible is that they basically go like, he's from Ethan's past. Well, how is he from Ethan's past? Shut up. And it's kind of <laughs> like, and it's kind of like, well... <laughs> like, and and that and that one hurt because I love Isai Morales. And, oh, same. And, and I was just like, like I was happy he was getting a check. And I think for like the action bits and stuff, I think he does a good job there. But as far as the the writing of the character, I just went, yeah, you just kind of went. We need to get you on screen. How can mm -hmm. we do it? Sure, um, you know. So again, through no fault of his own, and mm -hmm. I, I feel the same way here because yeah, I'm right there with you. It's like, well, given. And I think what does at least help for me with the villain is that the way they kind of tie in how she ties in the Carol uh, to, mm -hmm. to Carol. I went, that's actually logical given how Carol goes binary at the end of Captain Marvel. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, but still, it's very underwritten, and it's mm -hmm. kind of just it, you know. it. It's underwritten, and it feels like that was a part of a leftover draft from. Before WandaVision and Ms. Marvel wrapped up, before yeah. they were they were written into the film. Because I'll because I'll be real, I, I I don't think that we have uh um uh, Maniba or Yusuf uh, Khan in this movie in that draft. I think they mm -hmm. probably were like, "There's more villain stuff here," but mm -hmm. I think they went well. The family dynamic works so well on Miss Marvel. Like, do we really want to have them like not in here? Which would have been a huge mistake, by the way, because um, yeah, having... they're they're the fucking highlight. It's like a, a, a Kamala's mother, who uh, I'm I can never remember her name. It's uh, uh, I think it's Maniba, Maniba, Maniba Khan. Maniba, yeah, Maniba, yeah, Khan. Maniba, Maniba Khan, yeah, and. She is just playing it so sincerely and so authentically of, you know, the um, immigrant mom. 
that <laughs> the entire time she's like, no, Kamala, you're not going to space. <laughs> it's so funny. And, and it's uh, Zenobia Sharif who plays uh, who plays her. Yeah, and, and she nails it. Yeah, she nails it. Uh, Yusuf Khan, who is played by uh, Mohan Kapoor, he also still nails it, even nails it, even though considering uh, how he's been in the news, it felt kind of gross. Yeah, um, allegedly. Yeah. So, so real quick on Miss Marvel, um, I, I kind of love this movie. <laughs> like I was like I, I I've been thinking on it today because I was like, man. And I, I might go see it again Tuesday. Like, mm. I really enjoyed this. Um, so let me get my my rant out of the way because, mm. like, you know, hand me. me. Mm. Oh. Mm. oh, that's the stuff. Um, so here's the thing, y'all. It sucks that this is going to underperform in this first mm. weekend. It, it really does. And the reason why it sucks is because of the narrative that will be spun around it. It's going to go... It's a movie starring three women go woke go broke. Yeah, oh, star- yeah pull- starring yeah starring a uh, you know basically incels like poster child for you know toxic feminism with Brie Larson, a black woman in Tiona Paris, and a Pakistani American woman in uh, Iman Balani, directed by a black woman with uh, Nia DaCosta. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna that's gonna be uh, the narrative around it. Which... So real quick, so talk about the box office. So it says the last minute push. This is a deadline article here for the Marvels with an appearance uh, by star Brie Larson on the Tonight Show in a theater. Uh, New York uh, post actor mm-hmm. strike has not moved weekend grosses any higher for Marvel Studios. The Marvels, the film is seeing a Friday in the vicinity of where we expected it at 21.5 million and a weekend opening between 47 between 47 and mm. 2 million the lowest ever for Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, that's yeah, mm. and that, and that sucks because yeah. this really should be making more. And what I'll say on that is hopefully this kind of has an elemental sort of run because you know, when elemental opened up that yeah, was it, that, like yeah that that was, yeah that was you know most of these fucking like tiny dick little uh uh anti woke YouTube channels is fodder for you know months and months on end. And Elemental ended up with the final box office of four hundred and ninety four point seven million. Uh, yeah, boom, bitch. Um, and it yeah. had a it had a it was just the little film that could. It just kept going and mm-hmm. going. Um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and and with the Marvels, I I don't think. You know, I, even for me, I think this is kind of like a, like a, like a high stream. It's like I love the chemistry and the dynamic between all three of the leads. Some of the action set pieces are really cool. I love the family dynamic we get with uh, Kamala Khan and her family. But beyond that, everything is just fine. There's a set piece in in the, this kind of like water planet where we have a cameo by a uh, Park So Joon, who's a South Korean actor. And that one, I felt like it it was from another movie. Interesting. And and it didn't really gel to me. Okay, I I personally I personally like that scene. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I love, and I and one of the things I love about this movie is that it really gets into which is fascinating coming from Marvel. It gets into hero worship, and mm-hmm. um, Kamala has his point. Where Carol does some pretty cold as far as with the scroll, and, and that that's one thing I, I I do have to say. Like Marvel needs to figure out what they're doing with these goddamn scrolls. Like they, like mm-hmm. it's it like they're they're fucking the scrolls over quite a bit to a point where I'm kind of like this is kind of like Star Trek 09 with the Romulans. Like I get why you're you're all pissed off and you might end up being a giant thorn in the MCU side uh, as far as a villain arc, but. Um, but uh, Kamala has to see Carol in like not a positive light, and it's mm-hmm. really cool how she challenges her. And yeah, and um, yeah, and that is the best part about this movie because Kamala is such this fangirl, and even to the extent with the uh, with the uh, Iman Vellani, she is such this fangirl for Marvel that getting to like get a little peek behind the curtain of the reality of what being a hero is it, it, breaking into this uh 
uh, just kind of tearing down this fantasy of what it means, which is was basically, you know, Peter Parker's whole arc through his MCU appearances. It, it, exactly. And, and and if you're if you're a captain, if you've read a good amount of Captain Marvel, this is kind of her arc in the comics. She kind of mm-hmm. very similar to people like Superman and like Green Lantern and these people who are so overpowered. You're like, how can I relate to him? Mm-hmm them coming up short because it can't be ever at once. That is a huge arc for a lot of those heroes. And, you know, yeah. Carol. <laughs> yeah. And one of my favorite moments in, uh, into the spider verse is the most profound line about heroism is delivered by fucking spider ham. <laughs> yeah. It's like it, the hardest part about this job is you can't save everybody. Yeah. And, and Carol having to like, when, when Monica just straight up goes like, you promised a kid you'd be back and you never came back. That was a good scene, but I think, no, part of me wishes we got more of that because I feel like, I feel like a character like Monica who, you know, basically worked her entire life and is holding on to a lot of that resentment and uh, guilt that, you know, she got blipped when her mother was dying. I kind of wanted a little bit more animosity Heroes. between her and Carol, but okay. that, but that doesn't necessarily make a better movie. That just makes a more dramatic movie, which this, which the Marvels really isn't going for. This is kind of like aiming to be a more lighthearted romp. I think those dramatic beats are there though. Cause even when she, you know, goes like, it's so good to see you, you know, Lieutenant Troublemaker. And she goes, actually it's Monica Rambo. It's like, it's, it's, it's like Captain Rambo. Yeah, yeah. You're like, God damn. Like, it's like ice, like God called Gucci man. Cause that was icy. <laughs> um, but it, uh, <laughs> but, um, but it, it's, it's one of those things where you go, man, that's, that's fucked. But again, you understand where Monica's coming from because, hmm. you know, she left her to, you know, um, and I just like to point out, I said that her mom would have died of cancer. I can't prove that's because she hung off Carol, Carol when she went binary, but I'm counting as a win. So, ha! Huh. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, which, oh man, I, Nick will tell you when I threw out that theory, people were like, dude, yeah. you are high as fuck. And when, <laughs> and, and, and my partner looked at me, she was like, oh my gosh, she died of cancer. I'm like, Oh my god, were you right about her going binary? I was like, ha, ah, you remember. I was like, yeah. Yeah, shit. Yeah, right. and and I, I feel like if they wanted to write that in, I feel like that would have given more to Carol's arc because this whole thing with uh with why she's she's being called annihilator, which you hear in the in uh, one of the clips, it feels like it was a part of another draft of this movie. And I feel like if you wanted uh her wanted carol to kind of be going through this almost workaholic arc i feel like that would have been you know better or at least more tied to the character dynamics between this film so i i kind of give it the the 09 trek Mm -hmm. uh treatment in the sense of I think that you know spock fucking up that one time with uh eric bana's romulan character was enough for him to have that reputation throughout the universe. That's kind of how I equated it to Carol. I was like, okay, she fucked over the Kree or the um, scroll, pardon me. Mm-hmm. Um, the Kree took advantage of that. That's why that's part of the reason they've been in this war. And you know, and, and, and so that's where it, it comes from. I get what you're saying though. So um d- but just to provide another uh perspective. But um whenever the three of them are hanging out on screen together, um to, to Nick's point, which is quite often, like they kind of, uh, it, this is another, the movie's very well paced. I think it's mm. under two hours. Yeah. Um, this is the shortest Marvel movie at 105 minutes. And it just, it didn't need to be, it, it didn't need to be longer. I was just like, okay, like you, you figured this out. And, and that made me happy. I was like, good. I'm happy that y'all aren't, you know, uh, that you're oh, not, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah to, oh, so you're welcome. There you go. yeah, to my yeah, to my final thoughts. I I I liked this movie, I think, a little bit more than uh Josh and, and uh Dusk did. I had a great time with it. Where it worked, it worked really well for me. Uh the action set pieces I thought were really creative, the chemistry between all three leads. I thought whenever they were on screen, this movie sings. And this has one of my favorite comedic bits in all of the MCU 
combined with a needle drop that just had me dying laughing. Fair. Um, great. Oh, you would give it, you said stream it? Yeah, I, I give this a very high stream it bordering on a tune in. Okay. It's like, a, I had fun in the theater, but this is also one of the Marvel movies I'm not really dying to watch again. What about you, he, Hunter? Yeah, um, I might go see this again on Tuesday. I I went in this with really low expectations because I was hearing. I, I mean, there's definitely that balance of okay, which people are the assholes who just you know uh, mm -hmm. more more women, you know, wh where's the balance between that and people like, just, just get, like get you know. it's like a some douchebag throwing on his Andrew Tate classes just get these females out of my <laughs> comic books right like so. A bit of a hot take. I didn't love Barbie. Mm -hmm. um, it's an it's like an A though. Oh, so you hate yeah. women? Is what I, I I, exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. Fucking hate them. Um, <laughs> but but I'm like, it's still a solid A for me. Mm -hmm. Or let's go A minus. Like I really enjoyed it. Uh, the, some really, of the man. Beats, yeah, I know. I know. Some of the, some of the comedic beats don't work for me. I think if you change that uh, that I'm just Ken song and put it before the certain plot point, I think. The movie plays better because it feels like it kind of stops for that song to be there. Anyways, still a solid movie. Probably won't crack my top ten, but still a solid A minus, like uh, or a uh, or a uh, low. This is peak um, mm -hmm. for me, probably. Um, that's kind of where I fall with this. Um, I laughed the whole way through. Like that was something I was very happy about because the Khan family, rightfully so, at multiple points, like, oh man, that's so cool that you can fly. But um, where the fuck is our daughter? And they're being. <laughs> and they're, <laughs> Like, like they're not saying fuck, but they're like as nice. They're as trying to, to. <laughs> yeah, without saying fuck. That's what they're basically saying. Um, but and, uh, and yeah, I don't think we talked about him, but Samuel Jackson is Nick Fury, especially with how how kind of you know self serious he was in uh, in Secret Invasion. It was cool to see him have fun with this role again. Yeah, because he he's he's kind of paired with the cons that. Yeah. multiple points and 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 they were just and they were so much fun they like they were so much fun with that but um i uh, a bon Villani is to stand out in this um mm -hmm. the last five minutes of this movie i was like oh yeah i was like yep yeah. you're doing you're doing what this you can um you can do spoilers if you want oh you when uh because um because inspired by uh her team up with uh with uh <clears throat> with dammers and rambo kamala is inspired to go and seek out other heroes and the first stop is uh one of my all-time sup girls with uh hayley steinfeld reprising a role as kate bishop yeah fuck and, you bradley and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh and and uh it's so it's such a funny scene because uh how it's shot it's paired it's paralleling so much of uh of Bishop's interaction with Yelena and the Hawkeye show and even uh, Nick Fury's introduction into the MCU. I think even uh, Kamala's wearing the same coat that Yelena has on. Yeah, she, she, she is. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just so funny seeing their chemistry and I loved seeing it. And it does so much to set up that this new young Avengers, especially with these two at the helm, I'm so excited to see. I'm excited to see it because you have uh, Iman Bellani, who is such a fucking nerd with these comics and has so much love for this character. Yeah, she so so that happens. And then the mid credit in which I let out uh, in my partner's words, a soul piercing screech. Um, <laughs> Uh, Hank McCoy shows up because uh, yeah, Monica... yeah, Mo yeah, because at the end of this, uh, Monica Rambo is has to go across a hole in time and space and seal it from the other end, leaving her stranded. And at the mid credit scene, she wakes up in this hospital bed and she's greeted by a variant of her mom, Maria, who is uh, this universe's binary, and of course, you have uh. Hank McCoy in full beast regalia, rep played by Kelsey Grammer, reprising the role from X Men uh, Last Stand. Yeah, which was a trip. Um, the now only, the only thing I will say is, yeah, because it's full. It's a fully CG beast, and the CG is not great. Yeah, it's it, it's it's a B for beast, is what I would say. <laughs> but uh, but uh, 
It's a C for effort, but a B for beast. <laughs> but but um, yeah, it didn't bug me that bad. But it, it's not the best, I will say. Um, but that implication that really does feel like Hiddleston's going to be in dead, like Deadpool three, because I think mm. the I, I think we're going to start seeing the Fox timelines merge with the main MCU, and how Deadpool does that will be really fun. But um, an absolutely awesome 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 mid credit scene i uh, i think i said my grade but yeah. um i mm-hmm. yeah like this is peak is, is yeah. what mm-hmm. i know for this uh, so, yeah, yeah enjoy this yeah um yeah so yeah i wasn't as big a fan of it as you guys i gave it a little stream it dust gave mm-hmm. it skip it um on our review there um and we talked about it uh summarize it i guess briefly i mean i like the actors here, um, hmm. I thought sometimes they did have good chemistry. I like the action sequences. I liked when they switched. I thought that was pretty good. Overall, I think it totally it just was kind of over the place. I know this movie had a lot of production issues mm-hmm. and things were taken out and put back in and chopped and screwed. And I think you feel that in this movie. Um, I think the villain is one of the worst villains they've had in a long time. And that's kind of saying something. They've had a lot of really crappy, boring, dull villains. And I think that this was maybe on the, on the Mount Rushmore of dull crappy villains that they've had yeah. um and that's no offense to the actress i think you know uh zoe uh, ashton i think it's just the material she's given and i don't think there's really anything good for her here um you know a lot of the you know, stuff with nick fury just seems like it's just a lot of jokey stuff with him and i think you know it's such a tone shift if you were coming from secret invasion and then watching this and i get it's a little bit i guess them trying to more harken back to the dynamic that he had uh in captain marvel um you know that kind of dynamic they're trying to bring more that nick fury there um but yeah i I think some of the stuff he had it just like seemed like all his stuff was just mostly jokes um but i did like kamala khan i did like her family being here that was good um i thought that was good but uh yeah i just feel like it's just a string of action sequences kind of in the movie with no Mm -hmm. real good thread for them and the whole plot of like the beam in the sky i thought we moved past that i thought (laughs) Beams in the sky. I thought we were done with beams in the sky. Um, and I think I feel like I feel like this whole movie was just really just felt like setup, just to introduce the whole thing of a character going to another reality. To like, okay, we need a character who can vouch for these other people, who can connect and be the bridge to bring these people in. Um, so I just felt like that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I felt about that. And yeah, uh, Beast did look fucking horrendous. He looked. Like, uh, he looked <laughs> hey, like a... but you know what doesn't look horrendous? Tiona Paris in that suit because I know they yeah. they like I think it was in the news that they would like CG out uh like parts of actors' bodies like with the uh, <clears throat> like with the uh, the actor who played Namor in Wakanda yeah, forever that, that big old dong yeah that big, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like they did not they did not censor out uh Monica Rambeau's thighs which yeah God Woo! bless you for Man. it. There's there's a point where they're playing double dutch and two in these shorts, and I was like, Lord have mercy. I was like, that whoo, man. go ahead, girl. <laughs> like, um, and Brie Larson at a point is wearing like a straight up white tank top with this V that shows her abs off, and and um um yeah, I don't I don't even <laughs> have a joke. Is, is oh yeah, is there I, room I, is a room for me in your bed? Boom, there you go. <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, uh, thank you, thank you. But yeah. Um, so, what do you think will be the final box office for the Marvel? Uh, I will be very surprised if this breaks eighty million. Oh, it'll I'm, talking about, I'm talking about overall box office. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Eighty. Eighty, oh, just eighty million. Oh God, it'll hit eighty. Like by the time it's all said and done, it'll hit. Like I'm gonna say, yeah, because because. Uh, Let's be fair. It's like this movie was barely marketed, and a large part of that is because uh, a lot of the marketing push was during the SAC after strike, which just ended. Which congratulations, everyone, mm-hmm. for winning that strike. Striking mm-hmm. works, people. Congratulations, mm-hmm. all y'all. Yeah, and and also this is a sequel to a movie that cr- financially did very well. It was the first Captain Marvel broke a billion, but yep. but Marvel's kind of you know out of favor with the public eye there's like this whole uh you have to watch two entire ass disney plus shows to get the full backstory of two of the lead characters in this and 
let's be honest, Marvel is not in the greatest place box office wise. I mean, uh, Ammon the Wasp Quantumania didn't do so hot this year. Thor Love and Thunder didn't do great. I mean, made 800. So, okay, yeah, we let, let's talk about that real quick. Like, Love and Thunder made, like, I think 800 million. Like, uh, let me see. Like, uh, uh, so it made 700, uh, 760.9 million dollars. Okay, that's still, and then like Doctor Strange did almost a billion, Guardians did, I think, 850. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, yeah, but Guardians, with, yeah, uh, but with, we did 845. Yeah, million. but, but yeah. I think, I think with Wakanda Forever and uh, with, with, uh, <clears throat> with Doctor Strange and even with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, there was more a sense of like this is a film in the Marvel universe by this director. And okay. And I don't think uh I don't think uh uh Quantumania or uh even the Marvels, I feel like those more kind of lean heavily heavier on the formula as much as i think uh the costa does a great job of directing actors as far as like visual wise as far as like a lot of the stylistic choices there's not a lot about the marvels that screams this is a nia da costa film so so that so that i will agree with you on but i i think what's gonna i mean what is gonna screw this movie over is the fact that we just got the strike and there was no advertising for mm -hmm. it so i i think this movie worldwide Fuck! I'm yeah, gonna this, say four. This, I'm gonna say four. Yeah, this, I'm gonna say four hundred mil. I think this is. Yeah. I think it, it's gonna be very interesting how how the movie gets promoted after the strike because yes, very because true. First weekend, I don't think this movie does so hot. Yeah, but I think we'll probably see more and more if for as like the positive word of mouth or you know negative word of mouth spreads about this. And people start seeing the movie more and more. And as the actors are now able to promote the movie. So yeah. um, Ant-Man and the Wasp had $476.1 million. I think it, it's going to do more than that. I think Marvel's... Is think so? I think it's going to okay. do better than Ant-Man 3. Yeah. I, um, and I think this is a much better movie overall than Ant-Man 3. So I dug Ant-Man 3. I definitely like this more. Um I definitely like this more because I, I laughed harder in this. I laughed mm. pretty much the whole fucking time. Um, <laughs> um Amon Falani, whenever like she she knocks really all her shit out of the park. Like there there's there's this ongoing joke where she keeps uh rattling off like potential names to Monica, and mm. Monica's just like, God damn it, no, none of these are <laughs> like, 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 she it, just it, shut the fuck up. And and I don't know if those were written or if she was just going off the top. Like I like to think it's a mm. little column A, a little column B, but she she was amazing with how she was delivering that. But yeah, I just to, to Nick's point, it's gonna be really interesting how they advertise this now that they actually, you know, can. Um I I don't know. I, I think 400 million is about where it's gonna finish, but I, at the same time. Like the lesson on this isn't that, oh man, a movie with you know, okay, no more, okay, no, like, okay, no more comic book movies directed by women. That yeah, should like be that, the lesson here. Yeah, the lesson is we just got off of a fucking strike, and <laughs> this is like mm -hmm. that really because <laughs> that was the funny thing, like it, to see, oh yeah, the strike's over Friday on Fallon, uh, <laughs> 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 it'll send and in pre -large. so. I mean, clearly these studios are in scramble mode, but to be mm -hmm. real, next time pay your actors and writers and everyone mm -hmm. better and don't be assholes about AI and we won't have to go through this again. So hopefully lesson learned, but let's be honest, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like lesson is never learned because once again, David Zaslav acting a fool. Yeah. Why did they cancel that coyote? Like that Kyrie versus Acme. Like, stop shelving shit that's done. It doesn't make any sense that you're using this shit as a tax that's A, it's done. And B, it, apparently it was testing really well. And C, it was co written by James Gunn, who is taking over one of your fucking heads of the studio. So I'm happy you brought James Gunn because I got a wild swing for you. I think Gunn is out. At DC before 2030. I don't think he even gets through his whole <laughs> phase one. Because you at this point, the fact that Gunn produced that and it's not seeing the light of day mm. is insane to me. Like that's one of your guys. That is kind of your guy. 
moving forward. So why don't you put out something that he's, you know, so closely associated with? So yeah. um, I think Warner Brothers is going to sell to Apple before 2030. I, I think that's, I think they're going to, um, I think Warner's going to sell off DC to him. I think they're over the brand. I don't think they want to deal with the headache anymore. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was discussion of the Marvels. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Nick, and thank you, Hunter, for that review. Thank you.